Hello, me. Let's Ian here. Um, yeah, this is that video I said I'd send you a while ago now, and it was with regards to that ST diagram from 1940, 30. I don't know when it was. Anyway, I think it's this one here. Yeah, that's it there. Okay, so everything was in in Cape feet, and uh, we wanted to be able to. Initially, your your question was, how do I convert these coordinates into something that's going to be projected or trans transform into a, um, a project that we're using and that is possible to do now it, it's a bit of an exercise but there is a quicker way uh, around that and I want to show you that and and part of the reason is is that if you look at the um, the coordinates then Cape feet so these would need to be converted but then that also depends on on the sort of the equations we're using to convert it but then also uh, if you look, at the, it's quite a. This the, this was surveyed so long ago, 1937, by the looks of it up there, that the the features they were using to mark the pegs aren't even real pegs. It's uh, so we've got one is a, the the corner of a high rock, you know. So how accurate is that going to be? Uh, if it's almost 100 years ago, they 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 captured a hole in a rock. You know, is that rock in the same place? Is the which corner are they talking about? So, so from that point of view, the accuracy may be an issue to start with. But, but we're going to get around that anyway by using the the Surveyor General um, coordinates and and cadastral data set. And so, so what do we need to do? We need to find out where this is, and then see if that little shape corresponds to any of those survey diagrams or those uh, surveyed cadastrals and shape files. So we can start off by looking at what we do have here. So we we kind of got an indication of the fact that it's in Harry Smith, obviously. So you can go to Harry Smith and pan around until you see that shape. The other thing you can do is use these coordinates, and that's what we're going to do. We use these coordinates, put them into a spreadsheet, and then load them into a QGIS project and see if we can uh, shorten things up and find that uh, that property a, a bit quicker that way. Okay, so we're going to start off by just creating a little spreadsheet, and I'll create a new one, and just to make this a bit smaller so I can see what I'm doing here. So we're going to go point, we're going to create a point, point A, let's call it, and we're going to latitude, lati latitude and longitude. Okay, and we've got... 20, okay, so latitude is south, so it's 28 degrees, 29 minutes, so 28 degrees, oops, degrees, and 29 minutes, and then east is 29 degrees, and 6 minutes, okay, so we just want to convert that into something that we can read into QGIS. So we need to convert the minutes to um, decimal degrees. So all we're going to do is divide that by 60. So let's put that in an, in, in an equation. So we're going to go equals. So what do we want to do? We want to grab that. So I'm going to say write. Write to. So where is my I think I'm just going to have to type it in because I don't see it anyway. Right. And then it's right, that value, and it's two units. Let's see if that worked. Okay, so that little equation returns two values from the right for any of these cells. And in that instance, it's 29. And then we can if we repeat and put that there. And then just make that one because it's uh, six. We're going to make that one. So that's six actually. So we ne need to make that, you know, six is fine actually. So that's perfect. Okay. So we've got that. Now that needs to be divided by 60. So then we can say, I'm going to stick another bracket on that. And divide by 60. And uh, okay. So 29 minutes is equivalent to 0 0.48 minutes well decimal minutes okay we're gonna do the same thing here if we just divide that by 60 let's see if that works out 0 0.1 okay perfect okay so we've got that in uh, the decimal minutes now we just need to add it to 
the uh, 28 and 29. So for this one, what we'll do is we're going to say concatenate. So we're going to go concatenate. Actually, no, I'm not going to use concatenate. I want to, all I need, I need to go left to plus that. So I'm going to go, let's see, if I go plus, so if I go left, go left, left, and it is left um, B2, B2 and 2, enter. There we go. Okay, so we just repeat that here. So it's going to be, I'm just opening up some brackets. And I'm going to say left, no, it's not B2, it's C2. C2 and it's 2 as well. And the plus sign, don't forget that. Okay. Plus sign. Okay, there we go. So now we've converted those values to decimal degrees. We can uh, save it as a CSV and then import it into QGIS. So the only other thing we need to do is this is latitude. And southern in the southern hemisphere, it's a negative value. So that needs to be a negative. So all we'll do is we'll just stick another bracket on here. I like my brackets. I'll times that by minus 1. There we go. So that is a formula. So what I'll do is I'll just save this as an Excel spreadsheet for now. Save as, uh, where am I going to put it? I'll put it in here. Let's call it chords. There we go, chords. Okay, now I'm going to save it as a CSV. Save as, browse, I'll put it in the same place. And uh, CSV. So, yep. Okay, I've actually you what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to long lat because uh, you know, I've got two um, columns with the same names are not ideal. So let's just save that again. So okay, so now I'm going to use the latitude and longitude ones. So those are numbers. Okay, I can always come back to the Excel spreadsheet if there's an issue. So that's why I saved it as an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, if there's some formatting issue here. So let's close this and see what that looks like in QGIS. No, I've already saved it, so I don't need to save it again. So let's open up QGIS. And it's in Harry, Harry Smith, which is the Free State, I think. I think Harry Smith in the Free State. So let's go and add provincial boundaries just so I've got some ba base data as a background uh, and then when I add the um, that CSV I'll know if it's in the right place or not so let's just go here Victor political if I ask for have I got provincial boundaries here I do I think Harry Smith is here somewhere okay so let's let's just add that CSV Okay, my coordinate reference system is EPSG4326, which is decimal degrees. So now I should be able to add a CSV, which is a delimited text layer. So let's go find that layer. And hopefully it'll come in in the right place. So it's that one called CSV. Okay. Okay, that's not good. The geometry needs to be that okay so the geometry C coordinate reference system was um, defaulting to a previous one that I had used which is no good it needed to be EPSG 4326 which is the same as that and it might be slightly different because this is WGS 84 and in all likelihood they use some sort of other ellipsoid to predict the shape of the earth here so it's possible this might be out by a couple hundred meters but I if it at least puts us in the in a in a, in a in an area close enough to this shape, then we can try and find it. And we've also got a couple names here. Aberdeen 245, Longspray 1146. Okay, so if this whole exercise in uh, importing a CSV with the coordinates doesn't work out for us, we'll just go and look for these numbers. So these numbers might actually be 
in the parent um, SG data. So let's 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 back bear that in mind as a backup plan. Okay, let's add and close. Doop. Okay, there we go. So it's down here. And the great thing uh, that we've got with QGIS is obviously being able to turn on the quick map services just to see if we're in the right place. So we can turn on the, what are we going to turn on the Google roads and maybe make this provincial layer slightly, well, let's make it transparent so we can see, see straight through it. Okay, where's, where's Bethlehem? Lady Smith, Warden Harry Smith. Okay, so. <coughs> might be in the right place. Looks like it could be in the right place. I'll make this bigger. Maybe make five. Oh, five's a bit big. It's fine. Okay, so there's our little imported. Yeah, I don't like a color. I like something I can see. Uh, pink. Pink's always good. There we go. That's better. All right, so now what we can do is we can, uh, as long as you, you mentioned that you had access to, to the online um, databases to the SG data. So we want to add the farm boundaries. So I'm going to add farm boundaries, which are I've got stored as a shapefile on my system. So I just need to go find that. And it's a vector layer. It's Surveyor General. That was the free state. And we are looking for shapefiles. And we've got parent farm. I've also got earth and farm portion. I think uh, farm portion and parent farm will probably be good options here. Add and close. Let's just make sure that's on top again. And zoom in. And that is a way off over there. And if we look, if we go back, add this again. Let's make it a bit smaller. Where's that funny shape now? that shape there, that shape there, and the only shape that looks like that in the same vicinity is this one here. There we go. Okay, so that looks like that is the right shape. So what we can do is we can um, geo-reference the, the image that we, that we got from the SG, or if all we need is the property boundary, we can just select it and save it out. So we can say export, save, selected features. And yeah, where should we put it? I don't want it to be, I want it to be the same projection as my my um, project folder. And I'll go and stick it over here. Where's that folder? There it is. And let's just call it study area. Okay. There we go. Okay, so what if we would? What if we do want to georeference that uh, that image? We can do that quite simply uh, using the georeferencer. So if you turn on your plugin called the georeferencer, so if you go to manage and install plugins, and I think you've probably probably done this a few times. So <laughs> I might uh, I might be telling you something you already know. So my georeference is already turned on. So if you if you didn't turn it on, if you didn't have it turned on, you can come here and turn on georeferencer. I'm going to close. Let's turn off this other stuff. I don't really need it. I don't need that either. And then what I'll do is just zoom to that extent. And then turn on my georeferencer. There we go. And let's add that image. So which one was it? It's on my desktop. It's down here in this folder. I'll use that PNG. Okay, there we go. Okay, so there it is. I just need to zoom in to see what I'm georeferencing. Okay, so I'm going to georeference using that little shape and that little shape. So one of the things I like to do is turn on my snap settings. I'm going to snapping, snapping options, and I want to snap to the study area, and I'll use the vertex. Okay, so we'll set our first control point. Okay, so let's do our first control point, and let's zoom in a bit tighter. We'll do B, so we'll go and select that control point there, and then go from map canvas, and now with the snap settings, it's just going to snap to that point. We'll say OK, and zoom to previous, 
zoom in to C, add control point from map. Okay. Previous. Previous, zoom to previous. And the last one is, here it looks like an A. I think it's an A. There we go, so we've got four control points. Now we just need to set the transformation settings. Uh, I don't know what you want to use here. Let's just go with basic ones and see see what it comes out like. So it's just going to create a world file for that PNG. So let's run that and see what it looks like. Okay, and run it. Uh, what are we saying here? Selected file already seems to have a world file. Uh, no, let's just go back into that folder. Uh, you see, I, th uh, uh, I think I've done this. Uh, I did this a couple of weeks ago and I was trying to figure it out for you. So I just need to, that world file, I'm going to rename to old. Let's try that again. So now when we run this, okay, it's been added. Okay, it's added, but it's not quite 100% in the right place. You see there's no rotation. It needed to rotate slightly, so I think... If we chose a different transformation setting, is it helmet? Uh, let's try that one. That one might work. But let's call this helmet. 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 And run that. And then, well, not run it. Now we're running it. We just changed the settings there, so now we run it. Okay, there we go. So now using that second option did apply a rotation value. And it's still not 100%, but look, like I said, uh, this diagram could be slightly off uh, compared to the, because remember we used the, the study area as our control points. So it's not quite 100%, but at least we've got the farm boundaries and we're in the right, in the right place. And then you can always go ahead and, uh, well, let's see if the underlying data or the, the satellite imagery sort of agrees with what we're seeing and uh, I suspect it might not because this is probably quite an old old site so we can turn these off let's just turn on our satellite imagery and there's a few rocks okay so so now you can sort of maybe use this as as a way to verify that you're in the right area and uh, does that look that does look like it could be a heritage site uh, of some sort those boulders are probably pretty big impressive boulders little road coming down parking lot area little hut maybe a little uh, little place where you can read about what happened there so anyway that's how you do it um, I hope that little video helps you I did go on a bit but um, you know it's it, it, it can be a bit of a process the other option, remember, I was saying, if you, if you didn't find it with um, with uh, a longitude and latitude from the original um, from the original diagram, is you can use these these numbers and names. So let's see if that's is that's two four Aberdeen two four five, Longspreit one one four six. If we turn on the parent farm boundary information again, just deselect a few things here. And then what I'll do is I'll just make this uh, transparent, make that one, change the color so we can see it, and make it white. So now we should be able to see it. Okay, there we go. So now what we can do is maybe using that parent farm, are there farm names? Hmm. We've got parcel number, 1146245. Was it 1146? Double check that again. I'm not sure it was 1146. I thought it was something else. Uh, let's zoom in here. It is 1146. Okay, so that's another way. So you can, using your, uh, if, if you've got a basic uh, an idea of where it might be, you can. Um, Go and look for, for corresponding farm numbers 
and find it that way uh, as well. So anyway, yeah, I hope that was a helpful video. Give me a shout if you have any other questions. Cheers.